Hey guys, this is Tato Leong, and in this video, you will see 10 common things that have always been done in Dora but are usually done wrong. Most of the time, off-spread players tend to set up a lot of kills with rolling boulder and they are usually done from the fog of war. One common mistake that most players make is placing the stone too soon. Stone remnant can be seen from the fog of war so placing it early will expose your positioning and end up failing your initiation. Instead, try placing the stone at the very last second when you begin your roll so your opponent have lesser time to react to your initiation. Items like Radiance, Ring of Aquila can be noticed when there are creeps around you. So if you are looking to gank or flank your enemies from the fog, please toggle all this aura off so you don't expose your positioning. It is common for an alchemist to spray the pit to kill Roshan as it reduces Rosh armor. However, if you are looking to snipe Rosh, as his spray can be seen from outside the pit if the enemy has high ground vision of the Roshan pit. Unless you are sure that it is not water on any high ground, sniping a free Rosh should be done without the acid spray so to not expose your dirty little secret. Apart from bling RP or just walking in to echo saber a target, skewer can also be used as a form of initiation in some cases, but you should never skewer in like this. The chances of missing the skewer is very high as it is very easy to juke it. So instead, use your shortwave to set up the skewer. If you're playing mid, you can also do this at level 3 to skewer your enemy under your own tower. I'm sure that most invoker players out there will know about the cold snap tornado media combo but can you tell the difference between this and this The second example did slightly more damage and can be crucial if you are looking to make solo kills happen. If you place your meteor just slightly further behind, you will do more damage and that should be enough to take out any target without an escape. Waveform is an extremely simple spell, wave into Q or wave into farm. However, it is important to understand that waveform is the only escape spell that Morph have aside from stealing other escape abilities. So Morphling is always vulnerable when waveform is on cooldown. To offset this vulnerability, always expect yourself to get stunned after waveform. Instead of just using waveform, always use strength shift during the waveform itself so you don't die instantly. There is no drawback to this and it is a very good habit to have. Tiny has one of the most OP one-shot combo in the whole of Dota 2, but doing it wrong can cause your target to run away with 1 HP. The proper way to do this is not to toss stun, but to stun toss. Now most people stop there, but there's actually more to it. Can you tell the difference between this and this? The first example does around 870 damage, while the second example does around 960 damage. Casting toss instantly after stun is very important as any delay can cause you to do lesser damage. Keep in mind that this is without hitting the target even once, so if you add in a right click or two, you can easily solo queue any support.
Attentive Strike Multiplier is not based on whether you have max agility or max strength, but the comparison between them. If your agility is 50% more than your strength, you have the max agility multiplier. If your strength is 50% more than your agility, you have the max strength multiplier. If you are looking to one-shot your opponents with E-Blade, it is common to max agility so to do more damage, but in the late game where you want to balance out damage and survivability, having just 50% more agility than strength would be better than having 100% agility. Blink, Stun, Doom, Scorch Earth, Infernal Blade. Alright, cool. But there is a better way and more efficient way to do this. Instead of starting in with Blink Stun, try blinking into Infernal Blade then Stun. The mini stun from Infernal Blade will help you set up a longer stun duration and since Infernal Blade has only 4 seconds of cooldown, you will get another Infernal Blade shortly after the stun so you do way more damage than just blinking in to stun. It is very common to see tombstone on the cliff during fights as even if you have vision to kill the tomb, there are mischances as well. In situations when there are no cliffs, it is important to understand the full range of the zombie spawn so to fully utilize the positioning of your tombstone. Placing the tomb in the middle of the fight might look like a good idea, but the tomb will be very vulnerable to attacks. Instead, try placing your tomb 1000 units away from the team fight. The zombies will spawn 1200 range away from the tomb and placing it 1000 units away will force your opponents to either dive the tomb or run away. Thank you for staying to the end of the video, hope you've learned something and if you do, please hit that like button as it really helps out the channel. We have come a long way and I really appreciate everyone that have supported me and my journey to this day. I will try my best to stream whenever I'm free and I'll let you know on Discord and Instagram so please follow me there as well. I also genuinely promote party queuing as I believe that having someone to play with will definitely improve your gaming experience. So if you want to find someone to play with, do join my Discord. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.